Welcome everybody. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's November 21, 2015. And we're going to do another one real quick because I'm tired of hearing about it. The history of artificial clouds out of geoengineer a planet with jet fuel. Now I've been covering chemtrails for about three years. I went to the Washington DC EPA hearing and testified on this. So trust me, I know what I'm talking about. And uh, we're going to get down to brass tacks. What is geoengineering and chemtrails. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. We're going to do it first. All right. So this is more references than you can shake a stick at. But the bottom line is this. If you want to know how to geoengineer a planet, you do it with the jet fuel. And if you want to talk about it, this is how they talk about it. Impacts of aviation fuel sulfur content on climate and human health. Links are provided. They will be in the details. Let's get down to what they're doing here. Applying high fuel sulfur content fuels at aviation cruise altitudes combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel at lower altitude altitudes resulted in reduced aviation induced mortality and increased negative radiative index uh, compared to the baseline aviation scenario. So basically what they're talking about is ultra low sulfur jet fuel is biofuel, alternative fuels for jets. Um, what are biofuels? Well, they started uh, really coming around in 2000. Um, there was this thing called the U.S. Energy Independence Act of 2007 that mandated that all planes start using it. And what they've determined is, A, chemtrails are heating the planet. They trap heat, they um, insulate the planet, and they make it hotter. So how, how much hotter do they make it? Nobody knows. Um, but in the end, because of carbon taxes and carbon credits and the whole carbon trade-off scheme, the aviation industry will be broke by 2030 if they don't get their stuff together. So when you assess the climate impact of aviation, right now they're mainly focused on CO2. However, the aviation industry recognizes that everybody online complaining about chemtrails are pretty pissed off about the clouds. And these clouds are pretty special. And the clouds right now are heating the planet. So to geoengineer the planet with jet fuel, they are proposing using biofuels when you take off because le less sulfur will mean less dead people around airports. And then when they get to high altitude, put more sulfur in the jet fuel and the reason why is because that sulfur will cool the planet using these clouds right now they're heating the planet if they put enough sulfur in it'll cool the planet think i'm joking there is plenty of references for this stuff right now the access to flights are testing this stuff and you can see here this is from the ams and they talk about jp8 doped with sulfur JP8 fuel doped with sulfur. Now, let's go for another one. Let's find it right here. This is from Academy of Finland, FICA's funded COOL project, the COOL project. Stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. And as you can see, commercial aircraft could be used to deliver sulfate into the stratosphere by increasing fuel sulfur content and the flight altitude of intercontinental flights. The sulfur content of the fuel should be increased to about 50 times the current level to have a significant cooling effect. The cooling effect would be confined to the northern hemisphere. And as you can see, blue areas, this is where if they put a lot of sulfur in the jet fuel, it'll cool the planet. As you can notice right here in the middle of Africa, it got a little warmer. What they know about geoengineering solar radiation management or blocking the sun with chemicals like sulfur in the fuel um, is that it will decrease rainfall in the southern hemisphere. So South America, Africa, Australia, you're probably not going to get as much rain if they do this like they like to. Um, and that's that's one of the main concerns for me. So over here, you can see um, just the entire history of these planes making clouds and people experimenting on it. This is not a conspiracy anymore. We know too much. So let's go back to the beginning real quick and I'll go through it kind of quickly. All right, so what are we talking about here? There are many terms for the same things, um, but they're clouds. They're clouds made by planes. We're calling them 
chemtrails, contrails, persistent contrails, contrail cirrus, aviation-induced cloudiness, aviation-induced cirrus, induced cirrus cloudiness, jet-produced cloud cover, artificial clouds, global dimming. <laughs> I just saw a great video um, called Digital Clouds. Go look it up on YouTube, Digital Clouds. Great video. Um, so there are many terms for the same thing, but we're talking about planes, clouds coming out of planes. So the only question the entire chemtrail conspiracy um, group has is, we believe it's intentional. Whether you believe it's intentional or not, the clouds are still there. So I don't tend to focus on intent because I, I see it to be a straw man or a rabbit hole. Um, I try to focus on that which I can prove. And it's pretty simple to prove this stuff that uh, that uh, you see this. Watch this, guys. This is a, a little bit of censorship right here. This is not the video. This right here. I'm going to hit F5. Unbelievable. YouTube. You guys are scandalous. That is the EPA hearing on jet pollution that I attended, which just conveniently was replaced when YouTube embedded it on my website. Thank you, YouTube. Um, but this is the actual hearing where we went up to Washington, D.C. and showed them, you know, this is no joke. We're serious about your planes making clouds. Um, we believe it probably is an active geoengineering program, and we want you guys to knock it off. Thanks for playing the video, YouTube. That's me raising hell up on C-SPAN. So I went and I gave my speech on this stuff because I believe that it's a problem. It's a problem that's gone on for far too long, and I'm going to show you why. December 1958 to Metabunk, West, and all you trolls out there that believe just contrail. Oh, there's been contrails forever. Well, there's also been contrails covering the whole damn sky and clouds. So let's start. New fuss raised over jet trails. As you know, our entire economy is dependent upon the tourist trade, which is predicated on our bright sunshine and warm climate. Recently, our sky has resembled a mob of exuberant sky riders performing an aerial circus. These contrails are breaking down into a haze and creating a cloud-like appearance in the sky. The Air Force, so far, is flabbergasted. GTFO. Um, this is 1958, guys. Let's see, commercial aviation started around 53. <laughs> so it wasn't even six years, late, six years later, they're already covering the sky in Florida. Jet trails, dim sun, Palm Springs, gripes, 1958. So here we go. 1968, there's a scientist, uh, Reed A. Bryson, and he was quoted as saying, man making Earth a bad place to live, professor says. And he says, uh, where jets are operated today, cirrus clouds have increased by, increased by 5 to 10%. He estimated that if the day came when 300 supersonic transports were in the air at one time, the region of operation of most supersonic transports might easily be 100% covered in cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds or persistent contrails are chemtrails. Anyway, so... This guy said if there was 300 planes in the air that it might cover the whole dang sky. Well, guess what? Today, in 2015, there are more than 100,000 flights per day. 100,000 flights per day. So then, apparently, they were really smoking the place up and making clouds everywhere, and it was getting really, really bad. So in 1970, Illinois and New Jersey officials will not settle pollution suits against the nation's major airlines out of court. Despite Tuesday's agreement between the airlines and the federal government to lean up on jet aircraft exhaust, 31 major domestic airlines agreed to install burner cans to eliminate most of the smoke from their nearly 1,000 aircraft in 1972, U.S. to clamp down on jet pollution. This, this was two states suing over pollution from these planes. And then they said, we're not going to settle out of court. Screw you guys. So what did they do? They said they had a 70% reduction in smoke pollution, quote, smoke pollution. I guess smoke pollution was chemtrails in 1970. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So basically everything we're dealing with today already happened in 1970. They installed burner cans to make it a little better. Moving along, 
1970 apparatus for suppressing contrails. Apparently, they never used that. Um, and then also on the possibility of weather modification by aircraft contrails, quote, likely contrails are affecting precipitation to a much greater extent than our present, present deliberate seeding operations. Ooh. So basically, they're saying these clouds are affecting rain more than the cloud seeders are. Boom. Study revealed on jet pollution, air jet air pollution cut, uh, 74. This is weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy. They were talking about using carbon dust, carbon black soot, soot coming out of planes to modify hurricanes. The reason why? Soot is black. It absorbs heat. If you put heat into a hurricane, you can steer it. Boom. 1974. 1980. Clouded judgment. Do jet contrails increase cloud cover? Is this a joke? <laughs> oh, wait. It was ABC News or NBC News. That explains it. Moving along, a high-flying theory on the acid rain problem. Did you realize that chemtrails are full of sulfur like we were talking about at the beginning of this? Sulfuric acid, acid rain. When I was in high school, all they talked about was acid rain on a daily basis. What, they banned the term? Because I haven't heard anything about acid rain in like 20 years. <laughs> anyway, um, international cirrus experiment. Ooh, France, Germany, and the UK got together to do microphysical and optical properties of cirrus and contrails. Cloud field study, 1989. LIDAR measurements of chemtrails, 1989. So people started studying these clouds back here, 1987. Um, Hughes Aircraft Company suggests geoengineering jet fuel. Ooh, did we talk about that at the beginning of this video? Uh, one exemplary technique may be via the jet fuel as suggested by our prior work regarding metal metal metallic particles they're talking about putting tiny metal particles in the jet fuel this is stratospheric wells back seeding for the reduction of global warming very famous patent everybody talks about it but did you know about this one fuel sulfur content tested as source of contrail production influence of fuel sulfur content on the composition of aircraft exhaust plumes the experiments Sulfur one through seven. Now these seven experiments, sulfur one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, were on chemtrails. They were studying the sulfur in the clouds coming out of the back of these planes. Subsonic aircraft contrail and clouds affects special study success. They were studying contrails. Subsonic aircraft contrail and cloud effect special study. And they were studying the crap out of 1996. In-situ observation. In-situ means on-site. On -site, they flew a plane up there. Uh, a plane flew behind it to do observations of particles in jet exhaust, aircraft exhaust, and contrails for different sulfur fuel containing, uh, sulfur containing fuels. So testing different sulfur content fuels and the clouds they make. 1996. What, how long has this been going on? How long has this experiment with these clouds been going on? Global warming and ice ages. Okay, let's skip that one, but they talk about SO2. Sulfuric, first direct sulfuric acid detection in exhaust plume of jet aircrafts in flight. They actually flew up there and tested the, the sulfuric acid coming out of the back of these planes. Long weather predictions. This is another one. This is Ken Caldera. Ultrafine particle size distributions measured in aircraft exhaust plumes. Again, flying behind chemtrails and studying chemtrails. Happened many, many times. This is 2000. Then in, two, in September 11th, 2001, we had the 9-11 attacks and they grounded all flights. And this guy, Patrick Menace, and a bunch of dudes were studying it. And they saw that basically they had these couple of contrails here. These were left by the the president flying and like two F-16s. And what they saw was in a, in a sky with no clouds, just a couple of contrails. So they, you know, got the math out and they said, holy crap, we think that these are doing way more damage to the climate than we actually have ever accounted for. Because basically they, they say that, you know, if a cloud has spread out and it becomes a cirrus cloud, it's no longer a contrail. So the IPCC doesn't account for it or, you know, oh, it's just not. We can't tell the difference between natural clouds and ones left by planes because after they spread out, they look like all the rest. Convenient. Now, everybody has heard about coal ash. Coal ash. The whole coal ash story pisses me off so much. I've done so much work on Facebook trying to get the truth out there, but F it. 
close to reality jet fuel made from coal coal is a biofuel it is called green washing green washing let's let's just uh washing green washing is a compound word modeled on whitewash or green sheen is a form or of spin in which green PR or green marketing is deceptively used to promote the perception that an organization's products, aims, or policies are environmentally friendly. Greenwashing. The, the whole geo uh, the coal fuel, biofuel, that's greenwashing. That's taking dirty coal. They call it clean coal. I know you've heard the term by now. Coal ash my ass. Biofuels. Coal ash zeolites. I don't want to get too heavy for anybody, but coal ash is bullshit. Coal biofuels, go look it up. Tons of stuff on it. And the reason they want these biofuels is because by now, at this point, they realize these clouds are pretty much screwing everything up. Ooh, what can we do? Let's uh, sky graffiti warming up Earth, 2006. CBS. Oh, now the narrative's starting to change. These things are trapping heat. They are screwing up the planet. Albedo enhancement by stratospheric sulfur injections by Paul Crutzen, the Nobel Prize winner. Stratospheric sulfur injections. Moving along. The Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007 basically mandated that we use, like, you know, chicken fat. And, you know, I got all these different links for, <coughs> excuse me. You know, chicken fat fuel emissions look cleaner, greener. Ooh, green aviation, green washing. So they're using this coal. They're using all these different things now, like trash, municipal waste jet fuel. Let's go get your trash from your from your city and turn it into jet fuel. Maybe that might be a good idea. I don't know. Um, I just think it's weird that nobody knows about this stuff. So let's continue. Scientists take conspiracy out of airplane contrails 2007. What? 93,000 flights per day in 2008. We're now up to um, over 100,000. I think this video was actually made by Mick West. But it gives you an idea. I mean, look at that. Look at all these little dots spraying crap everywhere, making clouds, and everybody doesn't want to talk about the reality of the situation, but 100,000 flights a day and all this shit spewing out, bad, bad. Department of Homeland Security and MIT team, MIT team, team, uh, uh, MIT team up to steer hurricanes with carbon black aerosol soot. And this guy's name is Mosh Alamaro. He's getting money from Bill Gates's Pfizer program. They're calling hurricane mitigation steering hurricanes now they're calling that shit geoengineering i don't understand it i said it to ken caldera in 2012 what you guys are doing geoengineering weather modification they're the same they're exactly the same they're just on different scales geoengineering worldwide weather modification local that's the only difference they are st they're both doing the exact same thing so this guy says this presentation is focused on the use of carbon black aerosol to selectively heat parts of the atmosphere by dispersion of carbon black aerosol above a hurricane was it look like it looks like that halt a hurricane fleet of transport aircraft flying 50,000 feet drop soot into the path at targeted areas in the hurricane now, you know what's really interesting is Hurricane Sandy, um, the, the one that went up there in Dallas, New York, and flooded shit out of it. They routed every single plate in, plane in front of that hurricane, all every single aerosol, soot, sulfur, all of it, the metal, all of it that came out of there. It went into that hurricane. It just got worse and worse and bigger and bigger. They know, based on the paper back here in 74, on the possibility of, of contrails, um, you know, this one right here, they know that these contrails and these clouds coming in, these planes are screwing with all this stuff. So why would they continue to route flights directly in front of it? I do not know. But let's move along. Dope jet fuel discussed at Weather Modification Conference. Use commuter aircraft with their jet fuels doped with aerosol generators. Yeah, yeah, and that's legit, dude. All this stuff very legit you can go over here i've even put that video up on youtube and you can see it right here it's uh william cotton 
talking at the weather modification conference. And there's the, there's the slide, how to see, use commercial aircraft, put some dope crap in their fuel, in the fuel, not from some sp special spray hose, not from some magical device that everybody's looking for, in the fuel. I've been saying it for two years. Grow up, people, and let's do something about this. And there's the video. Modification of cirrus clouds to reduce global warming. Research paper. Dissolved or suspended in their jet fuel and later burned with the fuel. A potential delivery mechanism for seeding material is already in place. The airline industry. All real papers. All legit papers. IOP science. Bam. David Mitchell, William Finnegan, 2009. Let's burn some shit in the jet fuel. Aviation and global climate change in the 21st century. And as you can see here, induced serious cloudiness, key uncertainty in the IPCC models. Lee et al. 2009. They don't know shit about these clouds. Cloud aerosol interaction is the most unknown of the variables in their models. They don't know jack about clouds and aerosols and how they interact. Continuing, contrail spreading into Cirrus, Cossack. Yeah, another uh, program you might want to check out if you're not familiar with it. Um, and as you can see, a case study for the radiative forcing of persistent contrails evolving into contrail induced Cirrus. This is great. A single aircraft operating in conditions favorable for persistent contrail formation appears to exert a contrail induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than the recent estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing for the entire civil aviation fleet. So what does that say? They came up with a number and they said, here's what we think all of the planes, the 100,000 planes a day are doing to the, to the, to the environment. And when they had the opportunity, and an E3 AWACS was flying over um, the UK. This was during the volcano, okay? Same thing happened in 2011, 2001 with the 9-11 thing. They had one plane in the air and they were able to study it. This is one plane. And as you can see, there's circles right here. This is the E3 AWACS doing circles, looking for terrorists, you know, or right off after the, the volcano. And you can see these clouds spread out and cover most of the UK. And these are just plane trails. There were no other clouds in the sky. That's why they were able to do this. And they said, oh my God, this could be as much as 5,000 times worse than we thought before. Boom. Um, so that's a problem for them. That's a big, big problem for them. Um, and we're going to, we're going to have to really, you know, Wait, wait for some more details because basically there's a great fight in the scientific community over how bad is it. But regardless, benefit risks and costs of stratospheric geoengineering, dispersing gases from planes, addition of sulfur to the fuel, release the aerosol through the exhaust system, release the sulfur from its own tank within the plane. I don't know how many more how many more quotes do you need to get it because I'm going to make sure that this entire community gets the seriousness of what's going on and how big this is and how it works, who's doing it and why. Why are they doing it? So, so right here, this is uh, Ulrich Schumann talking at the ICAO Colloquium on Aviation and Climate Change. And this is this is the smoking gun these clouds are now being geoengineered for sure and we know why and who and how both aspects quote both aspects offer a potential for aviation to reduce the climate impact of aviation less soot emissions less warming and more cooling contrails now when you put we want less warming contrails and more cooling contrails that is intent that is the I word that everybody's looking for. I want to know intentionally somebody is screwing with the clouds to do X, Y, and Z. Ulrich Schumann, ICAO. I don't want to get too deep. I went to the, to the EPA hearing because the EPA is basically saying, we're going to wait till February to find out what to do about these planes making clouds. But we're going to wait till February to see what the ICAO the International Civil Aviation Organization, a group, a body made up of the aviation industry itself, is going to regulate itself. So the EPA is going to wait till February. 
to see how they regulate themselves and then they may regulate them. Now, me and all the people on that panel at the EPA know about the geoengineering with biofuels. I want to underline that. They knew, they know, and they are in agreement with the ICAO to let them do this. The Convention for Biological Diversity states that geoengineering will be illegal. So what they're doing is illegal. What they're trying to do is let's jigger the, the clouds coming out of these planes to make them cool the planet, and then we can avoid paying carbon taxes. Hell, if we cool the planet, we can actually get carbon credits. It's about that money, people. It's about that money. And you can see right here, he says, contrails with larger aircraft are thicker and stay longer than smaller ones. More soot causes smaller ice particles with sediment, later cause longer contrails. These are some of the studies they're going, oh, how, do we, how are these clouds getting made? Well, what are we going to do about it? Less warming and more cooling contrails. Smoking gun. Then they came up with the COSIP, Contrail Serious Simulation and Prediction Application, which can tell them where the contrails are going to occur. They can plan for it probably make some money off of it. And here's a whole bunch more of the studies for that. So look through those, Omega, you know, formation flying civil airlines. Have you ever seen the planes flying? There's like three or four of them in a row and they look like a bunch of geese. Well, that's exactly what the DLR is proposing. Um, geese fly in a formation where the, the plane, the, the bird in the, in the lead does all the work and the planes in the rear or the birds in the rear don't do as much work. Well, if they can line the planes up, they could save on gas. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, then, of course, Case Orange. This was the Belfort Group's chemtrail report. It's 328 pages, and they covered a lot of what I'm talking about. A lot of it. Um, you can check that out. And then atmospheric science, seeing through the contrails. Spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. Boom. Not cooling the planet. People are heating the planet right now, and that's a bad thing. Design of, of aircraft trajectories based on trade-offs between emission sources. Ooh, persistent contrail formation model. If we fly this way, maybe we can avoid some of these. If we fly through them and intentionally make them and they cool the planet, hell, we can make some money on that. <laughs> That's great. Uh, David Keith, geoengineering cost analysis. We're up to 2011 now. However, this is quote David, injection of sulfuric acid into the exhaust <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Injection of sulfuric acid into the exhaust. How do you do it? You put sulfur in the jet fuel. And then he talks about how much all that will cost. Pretty interesting. 747s, eight bases, 747, four bases. And, you know, it's about $2.8 billion a year. Whoa. Or no, $4.5 billion uh, for one year of operations to dump chemicals on your head. Bad man. Do planes trigger rains? It's about hole punch clouds, if you ever want to look about it. But airplanes do cause clouds to dump their contents prematurely. When they fly through clouds, they can burn a hole in them, make it rain. Bad stuff. United Airlines, first U.S. commercial advanced biofuel flight. And this is United Airlines going, we're going to go ahead and try this Camelina plant, biofuel, you know, algae-based coal based, you know, give me something, give me any kind of fuel that I can burn that won't make as many clouds so we can, or make some clouds that cool the planet. Cause for F sake, we don't want to pay all this carbon tax. They were first in the, in the ring, but before this, the military had already tried it. I believe, um, the birth of ultra, ultra low sulfur jet fuel. Um, this is NASA alternative fuel research. The it's called CAFE commercial aviation alternative fuels initiative. And you can see right here, um, the JP8 has 100 on the sulfur, and then they've got these, you know, no sulfur, ultra, ultra low sulfur, zero sulfur fuels. These are the ones they're going to use on takeout, takeoff that we talked about at the beginning of the video. We want to use fuels that are biofuels so that we kill less people <laughs> around airports. And then when we get up into the air, we're going to use the other gas tank because there's more than one tanks in these planes. And we're going to use the high sulfur content fuel when we're up there. Insanity. Um, Insight researchers explore how aircraft contrails can impact in climate. Um, and this is the um, 
researchers at the Surfax Laboratory de Aerologic <laughs> recently invited received an insight award for 20 million hours at the Argonne Leadership Commu Computing Facility. So this is a supercomputer that they're trying to figure this stuff out on. They still don't know. <laughs> it's 2015. They still don't know shit about it. Um, now, here's a crazy one. Geoengineering pa paper proposes U.S. Air Force Civil Reserve Air Fleet craft convert Boeing 747s to deliver chemicals for solar radiation management. Yeah. Determining the Boeing 747 conversion costs for the craft program. And you can see that over here. It's on the military site, oaidtic.mil. Um, and what that, what basically this is, the Civil Reserve, um, you know, air fleet is a way for them to take, you know, planes that are in the air today and rapidly convert them to military use. All right. Now, I wouldn't even be talking about this had David Keith not brought it up. So this is in Jay McClellan's, what's the title of the paper? Let's make sure everybody's playing along here. Um, cost analysis of stratospheric albedo modification delivery systems. Okay. And this is, you know, you can see it's on here. Um, it's on Keith.c's. So that's David Keith's website. He's got a link to it. And this is McClellan, David Keith, and Jay Apt. All right. And you can flip through that bad boy. And I'm going to go down here just so you guys know I'm not making this shit up. There's a picture. Put the picture here. Here's the picture. I don't know why. People just don't read this stuff, I guess. I read everything. So in David Keith's little chart he's got here, I saw this. B, U.S. Air Force Civil Reserve Fleet Passenger Jet 2 Cargo Conversion Cost. B, right there. Large cargo, Boeing 747, $30.5 million. Physical year 10. So I guess that would have been 2010. I guess my figures. Um, but anyway, he says right here, B. And I saw this B and I said that. So what he's talking about is using the military, U.S. Air Force Civil Reserve Fleet, to convert Boeing 747s to deliver chemicals. David Keith was proposing using our military to do that. That is interesting. I-M-O-T-B-H. So, um... And of course, that's also funded by Bill Gates' Pfizer program. Stratospheric passenger flights are likely an inefficient geoengineering strategy. So there's a hater. Commercial aircraft, not viable strategy for geoengineering. So I guess they saw David's paper and was like, that's just too damn expensive. We can never do this. These two papers, they're wrong. Um, U.S. Air Force Defense Department switching to civil grade aviation fuel. Um, they had this thing called the single fuel concept. They screwed up the sky guys from 1988 to 1996 when they converted every single plane in the military to JP-8. JP-8 has a 10 times uh, concentration of aluminum as JP-4 that they were using before. So all the aluminum in the sky um, probably has a lot to do with that JP-8 because JP-8 was loaded with aluminum. Anyway, so now they're converting away from that. Everybody in the world is going to use Jet-8. Um, and that just means that it's easier to put the same thing in all the fuel for everybody. So again, we're here at the commercial, you know, the, the FICO thing, you know, inject sulfate aerosols in the fuel. I mean, by now we've got to that point. Then AMEG, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, said that methane is going to blow up the planet. and We need to geoengineer the Arctic immediately to fix that. And in, in that, he says, enhance the current cooling effect of currently emitted sulfate aerosols in the troposphere. For example, the regulation to ban bunker fuel for ships should be relaxed. Now, what is he talking about with ships? Might as well do this now. I'm going to come over here to Climate Viewer 3D. This is at climateviewer.net. This is my app I made. I'm going to click on layers. Then I'm going to click on satellites. You can see right here, satellite, satellite imagery, modus, terra, corrected reflectance. All right. I'm going to turn that on. We're going to see two things. Ship tracks. See these ship tracks? Ship tracks make contrails look like tiny little dots in the sky. Want to see the comparison? That's ship tracks. That's about the size of, it's bigger than Texas. That's a, the size of Texas there. Some more right down here. You can see them clear as day. See the white lines. I'm going to show you them in a better format in just a second. But over here, here's the contrails. Now, same thing. They're screwing up the sky. You know, big stripes. We all recognize them. But when you compare those to those, there's really no comparison. 
Um, and that's what the guy's talking about here, bunker fuel for ships. So if they relax the regulation on uh, bunker fuel, haven't even looked it up, look it up yourself, um, and then send it to me because I'll love to hear it. Um, bunker fuel is obviously, it produces more clouds like we're seeing right here in the, you know, in the 3D. This is NASA satellite from yesterday, by the way. You can see that right here. I go to click on the little folder. And you see right here, imagery date, November 20, 2015. If I click this and I change the date, it'll load up the one from yesterday. Doesn't look as bad. But anyway, let's let's turn that one off. And I'm going to go to the three, five, um, 367 band. Look at this. It highlights ship tracks. Look at the color difference now. You can even see the ones that are in the clouds. You wouldn't, you could not see those on the other color bands. So if you turn it to the 367 band, they got a special one for highlighting this shit. Look at that. And you can see them clear as day, even in the brightest white clouds. And occasionally it'll even highlight the contrails, but usually, oh, look, you can see the shadows from the contrails. So those, those, those trails in the sky were so big that they actually left a shadow line on the ground there. See that? Nasty stuff. And that's why I have this, you know, app here is to track geoengineering and stuff. And of course, if you want to learn about geoengineering, click on geoengineering right here and see all of the programs worldwide. It'll uh, be more than enough to wet your whistle. So um, let's go back over here. This video is getting kind of long and I need to wrap it up. Um, jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control. Um, this is pretty much it in a nutshell. These biofuels are being billed as the savior for the aviation industry to keep them from getting carbon taxed out of the damn sky. Um, and I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. Nobody knows about it. Um, he's really talking about alternative fuel effects on contrails at cruise emissions access. The access flights are being flown by um, the FAA's ACCRI, Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, Dr. Rangsai Althori, I've talked to him several times. Um, access to alternative fuel flights begin tests. NASA to study em effects emissions of contrail formation on burning alternative jet fuels. So alternative jet fuels, biofuels, these are their new mother savior guide for the aviation industry. And that is geoengineering. They are actively experimenting on it. If you don't believe me, look right here. So here's a chase plane going up and, you know, Flying right there in the chemtrail. There you go. Flying right through it, taking sensor readings on these new biofuels. Um, same thing here. Here's a inside the, the cockpit view of what it looks like to fly in a chemtrail. Kind of tough, too. You should see this junk. It's pretty neat. So he comes up right about here, and he's going to start going up and rock and rolling right through the clouds. Pretty cool. So these are the access flights. They are testing them right now. They're you know trying to get these biofuels to save them from being screwed. <laughs> um, and you know here's the, the the proof in the pudding. JP8 doped with sulfur. You know the only other thing that they've even talked about is this stuff called cirrus cloud seeding. And cirrus cloud seeding basically is a uh, bismuth triiodide. So it's Pepto bismol. They want to spray the active ingredient Pepto bismol into these clouds and melt them. Advantage seeding aerosol resonance time is relatively short, so it doesn't last long. They can go up there and melt some clouds away and, oh God, it won't heat the planet up. Um, but do you really like the idea of them spraying a bunch of bismuth triiodide? They say it's non-toxic, but regardless, do you want them spraying Pepto bismol all over the place to make these clouds go away? I don't think that's a good idea. Um, especially because they have to make sure that they don't overseed. Overseeding is something you're going to hear a lot about very soon. I'm going to make a little documentary about it. But overseeding, basically they are putting too many particles into these clouds, which can cause droughts, which can shut off precipitation. And they now recognize it. It's even in their little day one. Could we, you know, could we screw with the planet? And if we did at sppclimateengineering.de, so it's a German website, you know, if they did, what would they do? You know, how bad would it be and all that? Well, this is the new one. It's called thermal radiation management, not solar radiation management, TRM, thermal radiation management, to get rid of the clouds. So there's your other option. They're either going to melt them with Pepto-Bismol or they're going to use these, you know, high sulfur content jet fuel to cool the planet. So that's the that's the whole thing in a nutshell. None of this can be argued with. You can't debunk a damn bit of it. Mick West is 
scared to deal with this because the bottom line is this is the truth. It's backed up 100% by references, and I hope that people can grow up, get past all the cool, you know, oh, they're trying to do mind control. I mean, come on, people. If you want to do something about it, all the facts are here. If they're not here, show me where I'm wrong. But you're not going to be able to. And if you do show me something that isn't in there and I see that it has something to do with this, I'm going to research it myself. So send it to me. All you got to do is click the little mail button right there. In fact, there's my phone number, 1-803-450-4305. This is as real as it gets. If it's not here, you need to come over here and click on research and go to geoengineering. Learn all about it. Well, guys, I'm practically hoarse. I did two videos in one day, and I'm about to get out of the house. So I hope you guys will spread this around. I hope you guys will research this and, uh, you know, make some of the people that talk about this stuff, you know, deal with the facts. Facts are there. Can't argue with them anymore. Love you guys, mean it. And uh, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Check us out at climateviewer.com and climateviewer.net. Love you, mean it.